And we're recording, and this is The Many Shades of Green with Zoom myself, version. Malcolm Berman, the, the uh, Zoomcast version. Yes, this is the Zoomcast version with, with well, uh, Malcolm Berman and, and uh, Maxine yep. Margo Rubin, right. who is the originator of the show. I'm the originator. I'm just an originator in general. You're, ha ha. You're, you're, one of the origi <laughs> you're one of the original green divas. I am. I've been green for a long time. I've, as a matter of fact, that's the premise of what we're going to be talking about today. I've been. I've been in green, uh, trying to get the message out about climate change and and, and the environment for um, 16 years now. And it's. I'm surprised you didn't see a dent in my head from banging it against the wall so many times to try to get people to understand that we are on the precipice of insanity and uh, catastrophe. And, and uh, while you never like to be the bearer of bad news, uh, we don't clean up our act. We're going to not be leaving good things for our children and their children and their children. And I know you have boy, two boys and eventually you're going to have grandkids. And you want that planet to be, you know, something the kids could go, go take a swim in the, in the ocean, right? And, yeah. and, and breathe air without coal particulates in it, you know, stuff that, you know, you want to have happen. So, I mean, it, it boils down to the media a lot and getting the message out. Um, the famous quote by Jim Morrison of The Doors, whoever controls the media controls the mind. It's so, so true. And, and then there's um, Horace Greeley, who uh, in my town is, is like everything is called Greeley. Uh, he he uh, had the Herald Tribune. He was uh, a journalist. He ran, for, he ran for office. He ran for president. So now in my area, in Chappaqua, we have two people who ran for president and lost. <laughs> Let's hear it. You know, but he said, journalism will kill you, but it will keep you alive while you're at, while you're at it. And that's cars really. And uh, it's just something that uh, we all know the media is the message. And for climate awareness um, and climate change, there seems to be something I call, and not only do I call it, it's in, it's in various different outlets, uh, climate silence. And uh, it just continues to go across the media, um, especially on television. Like most Americans get their news from the big three, ABC, CBS, NBC, and their affiliates, they have local affiliates like each each major network has local affiliates and people, that's where the bulk of the news is, is, is disseminated through the local and major news outlets. And for years and, and still even while it's getting a little better, all these, these major networks have not been devoting enough time to climate report, you know, to report on climate change. And it's crazy. I mean, you've had fires, horrible fires in LA right? How many yeah. times have you heard that it's linked to the climate, that the climate is changing because of the warm, the, you know, it's warming because the, the polar caps are melting, the sea levels are rising, rising, the, the water's getting warmer and, and the air is warmer and there's more droughts. And how many times do you see reports about that? In, in, in Los Angeles, we have constant reports about the uh... I, I live in Los Angeles, and we have the lo the local news. The local news right. is always talking about uh, how how uh, dry it is and how it's changing. But I have a question for you, which I don't know the answer. The question is, d does the uh, younger audience, you know, the ones my kids who are twenty five and twenty six or twenty six mm -hmm. and twenty four, they don't seem to be listening to television. They're listening to the social media. They get most of their news over the computer. Right, they do, which is why the social media um, from their perspective is, is very important. And there's a lot of young activists out there who are you know, doing, using social media to get the word out. I mean, you have the climate strikes, you have uh, Greta Thunberg, Jamie Margolin, uh, Shia Bastida, all these like youth activists from all over who are trying to get the message out and they started these climate, these strikes you know, Friday school strikes for climate. Uh, so the word is getting out, I think, on a level with those kids who are really active. But the, the problem is, you know, the, the 
the Gen Xers and up um, who do get their news from the major source. I mean, it's, a, it, it's known that millions and millions of people watch those news stations, the 630 news, it's, it's millions. And it's more than cable and it's more than public television, yet they do not report a good bulk of the climate directed news. I mean, they, they don't, as soon as, you know what happened in, I think in the seventies, the news divisions used to be a nonprofit entity of, of the networks. Correct. And then all the, of a sudden they said, well, you have to have a profit. So now you, you have to get, get, get your act together and, and put on stuff that's going to drive people to watch. And then we get more commercials and we, you know, and it's more money. And that's what happened. That's when it, I think it died. I mean, do you feel the same way? I mean, yeah, you know. Well, what you have, uh, what was the name of the movie with, uh, I forget the game, uh, not William ne Hurt. Not Network? Ne no, no, not Network. The one where, uh, oh, hell. Basically, he was a news reader, but he was good looking. Mm -hmm. You know, it was about net network news. And he didn't, hell. It doesn't matter. What's the premise? The, the, the point is, it wasn't whether they were good reporters. It was whether they were photogenic uh, on the news. Right. Whether they, they were good looking people. So people would watch them in and they got the news prepared for them by their writers. Right, exactly. And, and exactly. they really didn't write it and they didn't really have the opinion. They just could read well and they look good in front of the camera. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, if you if you look at, you know, certain news you know outlets, you'll see that still happening. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's, you know, unfortunately you want the pretty blonde or, or the good looking, yeah. you know, dark haired, blue eyed guy. And yeah, we want to watch them give the news, except we, we, I don't know what kind of news they're giving. <laughs> you know. Well, we know, we know more about uh, Megan and Harry uh, than, than anything else. I mean, that uh, right. they features they, much more than, than the uh, weather. Right. Or so that they change. did that. Right on. I think they said on Channel Seven, it was uh, or ABC that they gave more time to Harry Megan than they did to any climate story. Yeah, you know? I myself want to hear about uh, uh, Prince William because he's going to be the new king. You know, yeah, he'll be the he'll be the king. Yeah, because I think they're going to skip over. They, uh, you Charles. think they're going to skip Charles? I think so. Well, if Charles comes in, he's going to be in for two days. Hmm. I'm. Um. How I you know he's. I don't even know how old he is. What is he? Is he 70? Is, yeah, he's in is the he? 70s. Yeah, well, look at the queen. She's like 90 something. Yeah, she, I think 96, where her husband is like 99. Yeah, he's not in good health either. But, you know, that's what people want. This is what they eat up. They, they want the go gossip, you know, but, you know, but they don't get gossip because lately what they're getting is, again, a rash of, you know, killings and murders and mass murders in the United States. And that takes takes over the, the whole, you know, news show. Yeah. And uh, it's, the, again, the climate, you know, it, it takes a second, you know, second seating. I, I said, you know, there's some things I had, they have MSNBC has Chris Hayes is, he does a show called All In. And uh, he covered climate change for a solid week in 2016 because um, he wanted to highlight the issue because it was being ignored by the presidential candidates. Uh, and he said in a tweet, every single time we've covered climate change, it's been a palpable ratings killer. So the incentives are not great. And then the folks on Twitter answered back, TV used to be obligated to put on programming for the public good, even if it didn't get good ratings. And in 2016, corporate media chose gifting Trump it says five billion. I, I thought it was half a billion, but dollars in free time because it was good for the ratings. All the networks were focused on him, but it was disastrous for the country. Yet, look what they did. It, it you know. So when when the scientists of the UN uh, on the Intergovernmental Panel um, reported and warned that humanity that that there's 12 years to radically slash greenhouse gas emissions or face you know, a very calamitous future, only 22 of the 50 biggest newspapers in the country covered it. Well, wow. That's less than half. So, I mean, the news needs to be awakened because they have to inform people, they have to rouse, get people into action. And 
it's just not happening. It's kind of like a runaway train at this point, because if we don't, you know, limit this temperature rise to 1.5 Celsius to avoid, avoid climate catastrophe, we're in trouble. So, I mean, how do we go about getting the main news stations to, to like start covering it more? What do we need to do? Well, I, what has to happen? You know, what do you think we need to do? I, I, I think part of the problem is uh, it's not sexy enough. I mean, it's been going on for such a long time and there's no really answer. It's almost like immigration. The, the, it's been there and there's no answer. So people are tired of listening to it. I think that's well, part of the, the, the problem, the, the climate. I don't think we can put climate and sexy in the same sentence. And also, I don't think that people are getting the information enough to be tired about it. I think what they're tired of is the results of climate change, which are the fires, the droughts, the, the hurricanes, uh, level five hurricanes, which we've, you know, I mean, those are catastrophic hurricanes. Uh, you know, things that are happening around you, 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 you gotta, you gotta listen. I mean, te Texas had this this the snow in Austin and parts of Texas that are always sunny, you know, and always warm, and and then they blamed it on the green energy. Well, they get all their energy from coal, gas, oil. They get maybe ten or twelve percent from renewables. Yet the governor and the, and the, and they're blaming green the green. You know, yeah, what, what Texas, uh, Texas, I think, is its own world. Well, it also has its own grid. So it, 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 they don't want to deal with the federal government. So they have this grid that's just Texas. Is, it's the grid of Texas. Well, well I'm talking ment mentality. It's its own world. It's not part of uh, reality. Well, uh, you, know, if you hear what Ted Cruz says and, and the well, governor. Uh, uh, he's 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 a whole other ball of wax. But uh he he's yeah he's the one who ducks out during a crisis and goes to Mexico of all places. Mexico. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you're talking about weather change. Yesterday they had uh, I think tornadoes, and this is what the the 24th of uh, March. Of March. And yesterday they had tornadoes and then they had hailstorm. This was then they said as big as the hail as big as baseballs. This Where? was in Texas. 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 Yeah. Well. Yesterday and today. As I say, I, I did a show with Deborah uh, in South Carolina. They're bat battening down for uh, you know tornadoes there again. Mm -hmm. Well, I've that's like seen. The third day. I mean, here in New York, we we've had more windy days and higher gusts of wind, just wind, which I've never seen. You know, living here, you know, all my life, and uh. I know every, you know, when I talk to you, I can't even hear you on the phone sometimes because the wind, wind is so bad. I'm like, okay, Mel, got to go. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear you. Well, you know? I, I th yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, especially in this country, equate the weather change that's bad for other nations, not us. No. You know, they, they think of the the uh, the famines in Africa and, and the... Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the rainstorms in Europe uh, and somehow they don't equate it with our country. I don't know. No, that, that can't be because there's too much weather related, extreme weather related incidents that are affecting millions of people. And you would think that they would say, hey, what's wrong here? What's going on here? You know, I, I don't have power for weeks at a time. I, um, you know, there, there's, you know, floods. I, I can't move around. I can't do what I need to do. It's bad enough because we have COVID, which makes things, you know, just worse. But, you know, the, again, it's the news because they, they got to get the message out. I mean, you speaking of, you know, people that just are not thinking. I have a quote here. It says, the dumbing down of America is most evident in the slow decay of the substantive content in the enormously influential media. The 30 second sound bites, now down to 10 seconds or less, lowest common denominator programming, credulous presentations of pseudoscience and superstition, but especially a kind of celebration of ignorance. That's Carl Sagan said that. 
you know, and, and that was years ago, but he was kind of spot on before his time about it. And, you know, he, he, he honed in on a problem, you know, he honed in on, it's kind of a, a dumbing down, you know, in a way, because people are not aware of what's going on in their own backyard. Why? Why, why, are they just not paying attention? But it's not just that. They're not being given the news. They're not, they're not being, being given, given the news. The, yeah. They're not given the information because, you know, it's being put on the back burner. And unless they start, you know, putting in uh, special news, um, you know, there's a very big disconnect in, within the news media itself. And they took away climate reporters, you know, people who knew, people who knew the science. They fired them a few years ago uh, on, on PBS of all places, but now PBS is coming back because they realize they made a mistake. But the majority of people are not watching that necessarily. So, yeah. well, the, 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 the major thing, the major objection I have when I speak to people about the climate or environmental change is they say, well, the US is only a small part of it. And even if we change, you know, the, the, the major polluter is, you know, China. No, the well, United States is a major polluter. Right, we right, are the major polluter. They're talking about China and India, you know, yeah. if we were only no, no. a portion of it. Well, China and India are a part of it, but the United States per person, we have more carbon emission per person than anywhere in the planet. Well, we have more of everything. We have more garbage. We do more well, pollution in, in the water and in the air. And it's because we're more else. plugged in, you know, we're more plugged yeah. in. We are the most plugged in nation in the world. And you need power to plug in, right? And, uh, and right now it's fossil fuel. I mean, we had guests on the show about, um, you know, solar energy and renewables. And it's important that people, you know, I mean, it's cheaper now, solar energy. Is, is actually more, you know, in terms of price, uh, it's a better deal if you can well, get it, you know. Well, I guess last week we were, talk, we were talking about the solar farms, which right. uh, looks like this is probably the, instead of each individual house being solar, uh, solar, solarized, was solarized a word? Yep, solarized if, Whether word. each individual house would be solarized, now we could get the, uh, the solar energy through uh, solar farms and connect right. it the same way we're connected to the uh, there's to the power there's, grid. There's map, yeah. There's microgrids and the and there's solar siding. So you could put up like a solar site even in a building, a commercial building, and then be able to help you know disseminate the solar energy right. to homes that are near that area. You know, so you don't have to have the necessarily panels on your roof. Although that's probably the best way to do it still. Um, and then, you know, I mean, in LA, there should be like solar panels everywhere. I mean, you get the sun all the time. You know, it doesn't make sense. You know, are there solar powers in, in your area? Do you see solar people with panels? panels? Well, yeah, because, uh, but I, uh, when, when I go up the road, I go through the, uh, well, I'm, I'm in San Fernando Valley, but okay. I'm right next door to the, uh, to the overpass going into Beverly Hills and Bel Air, and they have plenty of solar panels. Beverly Hills, I don't know. You, I don't. You know, there, there's been issues with permitting there, so that's the whole other issue. You know, because you need to still get permitting. You, st you still need to lock through your your utility. Um, and to me, I, solar is there. It's free. It's coming down. Yeah, solar. You know. So how is this? become such an issue to try to get, you know, we were talking about, I don't think we, we talked about it on the show, but we, but before the show, we were talking about Bill Maher. He, Working. he wants up uh, to put up solar panels, you know, cause he, he's trying to be a, a good citizen. He has enough money to do it, but he has on the show every week, how many days it's been since he's been trying to get solar. Yeah, and and it's I'm over a thousand. Get, I'm trying to get Bill Maher on the show. Yeah. All right. Call him up. <laughs> well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it because he just lives uh, a few miles away from me. Really? All right. Yeah. We'll find out what's going on with this solar issue. This the problem is he had a lot, some of the times that the problem is the overhead lines. They just can't handle the increase yeah. in power. And so I think he had to pay 
if he wants it done, like not that he couldn't afford it, thirty to forty thousand dollars to to break up the street and add some lines underground to be able to support. He wants like seventy panels, and that's a lot. That's like a, almost a mini. That's a mini solar farm right there. So uh, between the permitting and 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 then he has to deal with the the town, whatever town it is. I'm not sure where he lives, but uh, I think he lives in Beverly Hills. Yeah, so he has to deal with that. He has to deal with breaking up the street and getting permission to break up the street and to put that in there. And then he has to deal with the power company. I don't know if it's P Pacific, you know, power. I don't know if it's your. No, my, which, my, mine is uh, you have a DWP, so, right, Department so, of Order and Power. Right. So there's, there's like different. Con yeah. So, I mean, here in New York, we have Con Ed and uh, every time it, a wind is projected to be uh, with gusts up to 50, 60 miles an hour, I get a text on my phone and it's like, be prepared for lines to be down and for you to lose power. And if you do, just contact us. <laughs> I don't see any. why they're, they're not taking those lines and burying it underground. It's very why they it's above a, ground. It's a lot of money. Uh, well, of course it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of money and trillions. to lose power. If they would have done that years ago, at least started, I don't think we'd have this problem. I, but I, they I, just I, they just wait all the time. They don't they don't you know, it's unbelievable. I, I think it must be the pigeon lobby. Ah, so, so. Yes, they I, like to be. The, like you to you be see, as you, I don't know about in your neck of the woods, but my yeah. neck of the woods, you go into the main street and you have to watch out for pigeon droppings because the pigeons are perched on the wires. Yeah, we I don't we don't have pigeons up in my area that I've seen. We have uh, we have a lot of blackbirds, a lot of yeah. like crows, a lot of uh, we have turtle doves. They're, turtle they're doves. beautiful. Uh, finches. I, I don't know. I took a picture of a a bird as I was walking today. I just don't know what bird it is. Yeah, well, you should come over here because we have. I live a few miles away from the uh, 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 Burbank, uh, not the uh, the, uh, the basin over here. Where they have it. This is kind of a big bird. Uh, yeah, I can't see it. Uh, yeah, I see it, but I, I I can't identify it. Yeah, I I don't know it. I don't know if it's the bottom of a blackbird or it's something. Yeah. I started to I started to sing the Beatles song. You know, blackbird singing right, right. in the edge. Uh, <laughs> but, but I was saying, I, I lived uh, two miles away from a migratory bird sanctuary, where the birds uh, during the winter they come from uh, you know north, mm -hmm. fly south. And over right. here, this is a midway stop for them. Oh, okay. so I, we always—it's beautiful. We see big flocks of birds coming over. You know, they—they they, they, winter or summer here. You know, they—they—it's they, uh, like the whales. They, they migrate. Yeah, I, you know, I they, just, they're, they're seeking warm weather. They don't like cold. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't blame them. Although, if I had a choice between cool weather and hot. I pick cool all the way, which is why I'm still here and my whole family lives in LA. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm the only one who's like, I I am like already today it was like 68 degrees and I was like, uh, you know, <laughs> it was too warm. It's warmer like, there than it was in Los Angeles. It's it's just too warm. I mean, so you know, I, I mean getting back to kind of the 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 media and the message, um you know, I, I'm, I was trying to think what, what can people do in, in terms of taking actions to, to get the main, you know, news networks to, 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 to speak to climate change more. And I didn't know, I was just throwing out like, maybe there could be a writing campaign, like uh, all the environmental activists would just barrage those three networks um, with, with postcards or something or emails or whatever saying, you know, we need to do something to get you guys to report on this more because we need to know what's going on. Sure. And um, so I'm thinking about how to do that. I, I don't, you know, maybe we can start getting the word out to, uh, you know, get the, uh, where, where someone could, you know, get the information where you can send an email and see if people would flood them, see if they, they would even notice. Well, you gotta get the word out. That's a problem. Yeah. The problem is the communications. I, I think people are my age, your age, or the baby, the baby boomers, and a little, maybe a generation under it, have been so inundated over the years, and not inundated, but have heard it so much over the years, it just passes over their head. 
I think our, 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 our hope is a younger generation, but the pr problem is when they get involved and they have the power, will it be too late? It will be, but the, as I said, there, I don't know how we can become, um, it, we haven't been inundated with it. What we've become inundated with, as I said before, is the, the end result of it, which is the storms, the drought, the fires. That's what, what's the product of it. In terms of reporting, there hasn't really been enough reporting for us to get sick of it because they haven't really been doing it. Yeah, the, but, but, but the outlets that are doing it are mostly independent. It's mostly, you know, the New Yorker or, or the Guardian or, you know, publications like that. Um, you know, public, public television and radio are doing a, a better job. Yeah. But again, it's the, the profit motive on the side of the networks that are prohibiting, you know, this to, to become to come out. I, yeah, I don't but, know but what to do. But what I'm talking about inundating is not over a year or two years. I'm talking about 20, 30, 40 years. I've been hearing this at least for 40 years. Here Every month, the air pollution, the uh, the, the climate that wasn't cl the uh, the climate change. How we can destroy ourselves because we're destroying the ozone layer. That I remember, you know, 30 years ago. I think they were talking about uh, destroying the ozone layer and the yeah uh, the ozone layer. That's yeah, the the effects of the sun coming in with its uh, arrays and this again. We've been here. I've been hearing this for 40 years. So a little by little, and nothing has been done, or relatively nothing, except maybe. Sometimes, for, uh, like in Los Angeles, we have less pollution because we're there are different additives in cars now in, in the gas. So it's not. I, I, I came in in the uh, you know late seventies, early eighties when they were doing this. But people who lived here before said you could see the air in Los yeah. Angeles. And I think I told the story. I remember I had a summer place, uh, shared a house in Fire Island. I lived in Manhattan, and I remember on Sunday driving back. To Manhattan, there's an area that you're at in the Long Island, and you see a gray cloud over the sky of Manhattan, and that was the pollution there, and it was cars. I know. It's, at this point, um, the the reason why we were seeing less pollution was because in 1970. Richard Nixon established the EPA. And within the EPA, they started the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act. It just happened overnight. It didn't just happen, you know, out of the clear blue. Something was done to try to stave off the pollution in the air, I mean, and the land and the water. I mean, it it's still prevalent. It's not stopping. Actually, it, it's still. I mean, you're gonna look at the Los Angeles skyline, see just crud, you know, you see crud in the in the downtown area, you see it's just haze, it's always hazy. Um, and in New York now too. And um, that's because within the last four years, they were tearing apart the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act and, and government had to step in, you know, in the seventies to do that. And, and then it was ripped apart in, 2016 and up till now. And now hopefully the Biden administration, I mean, at least they're saying they're gonna really take it seriously and and have like a climate crisis, you know, committee and 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 put they keep put people in there who really know what to do. Well, but well, well that's a good know. thing about the Biden administration right now. He's putting professionals into the uh into to each department, people who know what they're doing, not someone who gave political money. Right, and, and like, hopefully you know. they'll be able to um, get get something good out of it. I mean, at this point, I'm just hoping that what he says he's gonna do, he's gonna do. And, uh, and again, with good people in there, it's gonna work, but he has to undo everything that was undone. <laughs> you know? He has to just say, oh man, look at all, all the EPA was literally decimated to nothing. To to, I mean, they wanted to drill in national parks. That's the Department of Interior. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt would be spinning in his grave. He was the man who gave us all of these beautiful yeah. national parks. And the Trump administration 
was going to use them so that the fossil fuel industry could dig for oil and coal and gas on those very beautiful parks that we enjoy that we cherish right now right and and you know at this point we're i i feel lucky that you know we have people now who can as you say that they're, they're professionals they've worked all their lives you know to do you know good things and they know they know the science behind everything so you know that's a key thing i i, I mean but again it, it it all boils down to awareness and 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 people have to start to activate themselves instead of sitting by, they can't do that, you know? Well, I say, I, say, I, I think uh, I look to the younger generation. I, I, that's, yeah, but that, you, that's you, become more- You're an individual, you, you, have, you have the power within you to do something. You're not, you still, are, you still got plenty of years left on the planet and you can still, you, you, it's never too late to, to do things and to keep moving forward and to try to make, you know, something good, to do something right. good. There's, there's all these fantastic places you can get information. You can, you can work, there are so many organizations working on solutions. I'll read them off. Yeah, Climate Reality Project, Drawdown, Food and Water Watch, Riverkeeper Groups, Earth Justice, Zero Hour, Extinction Rebellion, Strike for Climate, Lonely Whale Foundation, uh, uh, we can, we the world, Climate Mama, and just so much more. You can watch documentaries and learn about what's going on. Biggest Little Farm, Wasted, the story of food waste. Bag It, about plastic bags. Before the Flood, um, which was DiCaprio. Uh, he did a, a really wonderful documentary about, you know, climate. Rancher, Farmer, Fisherman, Kiss the Ground, which is about the soil. Uh, fantastic Fungi. Um, and an inconvenient truth, which was, you know, Al Gore, which kind of started the documentaries off, and he won an Oscar for that. And you can also write your local officials, write your national representatives. There's so much you can do. Yeah, um, yeah Max, you, you have a website, right? Uh, I have a website, themanyshadesofgreen.com. Do, do they have, can, can they get a list of those organizations, or do you have it where you can refer them to it? I can throw it up on there and, yeah. you know, and, and, and say, you know, I could just put a separate thing on there. I don't have to get all their uh, web sites exactly, but, you know, and also we need to teach you were talking about the kids that you, you're having faith that the youth is going to carry this forward because you can't. Why Malcolm? Why can't you is my no, question. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm not saying me. I'm saying my generation of doing this a whole, I'm Look doing at the Jane, how old is Jane Fonda? Uh, 80 something. Yeah, I think she's 82 or something. Okay. She is, she gets herself arrested. She got herself arrested six times on Fridays for Future in Washington, D.C. She got herself handcuffed and she was brought into to jail because she was trying to make a point that the environment needs to be considered and needs to yeah, do but, stuff. Yeah, but, but, but there's only one Jane Fonda. I, I mean, no, Jane Fonda that, is- No, the, but it wasn't the, only Jane the, Fonda. It was, it was Ted Dan, she grew, she grew, she got all her, her buddies to come with her on different days. And they all, Sam Waterston got arrested. Uh, Martin Sheen got arrested. Lily Tomlin got arrested. That was the Grace and Frankie crew. Um, she, she got Ted Danson in there. She got like all these celebs who are all up there who, you know, of course they have the money and the gravitas and the celebrity to, to get out there, but still they did something. They actually wound up in jail well, for climate. I, 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 <laughs> so tell me again, how someone yeah, well, in their late you're, you're, you're right, you're right I'm using age as an excuse. You are, I'm, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna beat you up on that, <laughs> but- But but I, I'm almost like, when, when last time I spoke to your brother, Phil, we, mm -hmm. had, we had a show together and, and Phil was a, a political show. And he sort of like, uh, last time I spoke to him, he was very defeated. He thought this country is, you know, it, it, it's over. He said that too many people that think of the same way that uh, our former president thought and too many people that voted for him and there's too much of a schism between both sides. And he more or less has well, given up the fight. He might start fighting again. Well, you know, that's an example that I wouldn't use as a, because I, I know a lot of people who are in their 70s and 80s 
in these organizations who just keep fighting away. And they, you know, are very, very, they have a passion to make sure that, you know, their kids and grandkids yeah. and their kids right. are going to have a place in this world that's clean, clean air and water. And, and you know, I, I'm like, you know, I don't have grandkids yet. I hope one day, but I want to make sure that, you know, they're going to be safe and I'm not going to stop. I mean, you know, they'll put me in the ground to stop me. I, I ain't stopping. There's no <laughs> and way. And that might not stop you, you either. You know, no, it might not, because I'll, I'll wear a mushroom suit and I'll just keep decomposing mushrooms, uh, you know. But uh, but in, in terms of there's a lot people can do and they just have to do it. And they have to get the thing in their mind that they're going to make a conscious effort to help the environment by either watching these documentaries, you know, joining one of these organizations, which gives great information. And then also, I think we need to create, again, back to the kids, um, a climate curriculum that should be taught in schools from K through 12 through college uh, about environmental issues. Uh, I think it's important. So there's a lot to do and there's a lot of work to do. And, uh, and there's more of us. There are more of us than what Phil thinks is, you know, there are those people, yes, who follow and continue to follow a path that is not, you know, a good path, I think. And for whatever reasons they do it, I can't even begin to think that I would talk to some people like that. I don't know how I would change their mind. I don't know what I would do to make them understand that we are having a problem with the environment and you can't deny it. You cannot no, no, deny no it. So, I mean, how do you get to these people? How do you speak to them? Is it even possible? But the thing is, they're like 39% of this country, which leaves us with 61% who are not. And that means there's more of us. So well, that's, where I, that's where I see the hope. So sometimes I'm more like, I think the word is a nihilist. Uh, not yeah. a nihilist, a nihilist, a nihilist. Yeah, a nihilist. Yeah, I, I, I try to, because uh, I've been doing this for so long. I've been doing this before it was even, that you know, there would you, you put on your hand how many people would would listen up before it was in vogue. You know, and and now uh, it's it's being reported more, yes, but it's not being reported enough, and that's well, my beef. Well, I That's do things like uh, individually, like, you know, as far as, you know, pollution, I, I separate, you know, the, the reusable things. I, uh, you know, don't use plastic bags. I, I, I reuse the bags when I go marketing, you know, but I, I mean, but it's, it's really trivial. Well, it's not because if you multiply yourself by millions of people, then it's not trivial. Right. Then but you becomes... know, it's not, you know, it's not trivial either. We've been on for about 40 minutes. Ooh. All right, so we can trivially go off. <laughs> we can trivially go off, and uh, you, you have phone... someone on the you have the sh uh, the show next week is back in uh, Hudson River. Hudson River next week. We're we're next doing uh, um, who are we doing? We're doing uh, oh the Earth Day initiative. Is the Earth Day, on. yeah, yeah. We're coming up on Earth Day in April twenty second, but we're gonna do so uh, uh, have someone on to talk about it. And you say it's our Earth Month, month uh, it's April? It's Earth Month. April is Earth Month. And uh, so we have to make Mother Earth the uh, the number one lady in our lives that month. Okay. So, so, sounds good. So, uh, so well, well, I'll, well, I'll join you for the other show, but we won't be necessarily. We'll, uh, we'll on, be Zooming, on. but we'll be Zooming again. And we'll, we'll be, be Zooming. We'll be Zooming on other things, too. We'll be we'll be zooming again. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. We'll be zooming again. Have so. a great week. All right, you take care. Bye. All right.